What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Nugs B, and I just want to give a shout out to all of the sponsors of Hashtag Together FTR. The first sponsor I want to give a big shout out to today is Advanaclean of the Tri-State, ran by Joel and Pam Dooley. Advanaclean of the Tri-State provides essential indoor air quality services to residential and commercial customers. Things like mold removal, water damage, dryer vent cleaning, and air duct cleaning. Give them a call for a free estimate today at 606 331 Five zero zero one, and that six zero six three three one five zero zero one. Go ahead if you're on Facebook. Head over to their Facebook page at Advanta Clean of the Tri State. Give them a like. Be sure to share their page. Send them a message and say Taylor sent you. And if you need to go to their commercial location, you can find them at forty four forty six Thirteenth Street. Ashland, Kentucky. And the second sponsor today is a great friend of mine. He is seriously, hands down, top two sculptors I know personally. Uh, His name is Wyatt Freeman. W-Y-A-T-T-F-R-E-E-M-A-N. Look him up on Facebook. He's a sculptor, painter, He can draw, and just a great person all around. You can find him on Facebook, as I said. He is somebody I am recommending today that you need to get with as soon as possible to get some commissioned art. He charges a very reasonable fee and can do pretty much anything you need and will work with you very attentively. And last but not least for the sponsors of this episode... Few Apparel. Shout out to my dude nephew over there killing the game at Few Apparel. And you all can check him out on Facebook. And this dude's real awesome. He can get you all the way together with your merch. If you're, uh, you know, a rapper or if you're a band or anything that you're chasing in your artistry, he can get you taken care of. T-shirts, hoodies, so on and so forth. So make sure to check out Few Apparel today. Let's go ahead and get this episode started. What's up, everybody? You listening to For the Record with your host, Nugs B. Oh, it's for the record, son. Yeah. Yeah. It's for the. It's for the record. I said it's for the. It's for the record. Yeah, boy, it's for the. It's for What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Nugs B. Episode 44, for the record, hashtag Together FTR. I am joined by Chris Leachman. How you doing today, sir? Doing good, man. Doing good. It's been a pretty good day. Got a lot of things talked about before the episode so we can, you know, nerd out a little bit. No big deal. These fools better watch out. You know we coming in hot. Uh, First thing we're going to start this off with is the entertainment history, as usual, On this day in 1995, Gangsta Rap rules with the Dog Pound at number one on the U.S. album charts with Dog Food. Snoop Dogg is not a part of this group. The Dog Pound are Death Row label mates, Daz Dillinger, and Corrupt. Other gangsters in this 20... Oh, no, sorry. Other gangsters in the top 10 are Cypress Hill with uh, Cypress Hill 3 at number 3 and 8 Ball and MG at number 8. With on top of the world, dude. Let's just go ahead and hey, be clear. That Cypress Hill album was great. God, it was so good. Great. And, and, and you know, in later years, you got Doggy Style, which comes, which right. is probably Snoop's best album, in my opinion. Yeah. God, yeah. it was so good. You had everybody in the Dog Pound on that. Yeah. Plus, I mean, it was strictly, it was like funk rap. It wasn't even like your traditional rap that we were well, used to hearing. Rap in the 90s was so different from rap today anyway. I mean So different. Oh man. 
had but, a lot uh, more soul to it back then, I think. And what I loved about, you know, uh, a lot of rappers, not a lot of rappers, but some rappers, they really like to use, um, you know, a band behind them, dude. And that just really creates the scene of what they're doing. I feel like it puts a lot of different attributes to what they're doing on their album when they're touring off of that album. Yeah. You know, I feel like that band well, that really... helps out a whole lot more than having that synthesi- synthesizer. Yeah, music, you know, synthesizer you know? on the DJ type, yeah. you know, on the keyboard and stuff. 100%, man. It builds a lot, you know, a lot of ambience. It builds a lot of, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, thump whenever that bass comes, you know. Uh, on this day in 1991, Michael Jackson's black or white music video directed by John Landis debuts simultaneously on MTV, BET, and Fox, a strategic move that marks his ascension to the pop throne. The 11-minute clip, however, lands Jackson in hot water with viewers who complain about his excessive crotch-grabbing and displays of violence. I watched that live. Really? Yeah, I remember that very... Which one did you watch it on, MTV? Uh, probably. Yeah, probably. MTV was the move back then, uh, bro. Yeah. Oh, like when it back was when really they actually playing played music. music. Videos, oh, hey, and up. every time I heard Kurt Loder's voice come over, I knew they were about to <laughs> drop some real shit on me. I'm you know? telling you, son. But I remember I'm specifically watching that video, the black or white, because yeah. it was a big world premiere. It was a big deal, and Michael Jackson was the shit oh, back in dude, the early 90s. Oh, dude, he was the 90s, man you know? back then. So he's still uh, the man, bro. I, I, black or white's probably top five best songs for me, in my opinion. I wouldn't put it in the top five really? for sure. Yeah, I mean, what are you gonna throw in your top five? Oh God, I don't know. Dirty Diana's got to go on. Dirty there. Diana. God, it was so good. Billy Jean's my jam. Oh, Billie Jean's so good. Uh, thriller. Uh, th- oh, of course, Thriller. Uh, let me see. Man in the Mirror is a good oh, one. Oh my God, it was so good. Smooth Criminal. Uh, Come on, he's got a lot wall? of good ones. Off the Wall was probably the best album in my opinion. I don't know. Or Rock With You. Oh my Rock, God, yeah, the old ones. Great one. Yeah, great one, dude. Um, but yeah, I remember. When that video played, the last, uh, like the song was over, the the music was done. It was just like, you know, like almost like a little tiny, uh, like a short clip of, yeah. of a film or something. You yeah, know? a little snippet. So it was like the last six minutes of the video yeah. was literally him dancing in an alley, God, busting windows, and grabbing that's his just crotch. So great! I don't even care, and bro. The, I don't even. Pumped yeah, the about next that. day, that everybody was up in arms CNN, over that. CNN, yeah. Fox, all they those were all up were Michael all Jackson's up ass. On him. Bro, yeah, it's crazy, dude. I'm sure if he could go back to that being the worst thing he had to deal with, oh, bro, he would have been blessed because that was yeah. the best thing. Because honestly, you know, the whole uh, if we're just being objective, the whole child thing or whatever, in my opinion, I feel like it was a setup because that man was really starting to press I on mean, things that were happening in Hollywood. I don't know. A lot of people feel Could very differently about it. I Dude, look at those guys that came on the documentary. They were testifying in his favor back in 2000-whatever, and then all of a sudden he dies. Like, ah, oh, let me get a little money. Let me hit right. the grave. And that train. very well could be what's happening. It I don't be. know. I mean, I really be. hate to, to call Michael Jackson a kitty diddler. But, For sure. You know, yeah. he you very well know. may have been. You never know, dude. And that's what's so weird about, you know, I made a status about it the other day on Facebook that, you know, you might think you could end up being Ellen DeGeneres. You might be the next Harvey Weinstein if you get that money. Because mm. when people get that money, they change up, dude. Oh, absolutely. And they really, they, you can say all this, oh, yeah, I'd be a good citizen. I'd give back to the world. I'd do this. I'd do that. But when you get that money, it's a little bit different when they have those Hollywood parties. And they're like, hey, won't you come in this room real quick and check this out? Right. And then they set you up. And then you're getting, you know, you got a child sitting on your lap or, you know, some weird stuff, bro. And then all of a sudden you think it was all cool and it was it was very, you know. Um, I, I think when it comes to something like that, you've got to be a certain type of person, have a certain true. type of personality to go along with some shit like that. That's true. Because, you know, like, That's very true. I mean, granted, I'm not a millionaire or a billionaire or in these yeah, people's yeah, yeah. positions, but I know if some stuff like that's going down around me, no, I'm losing it. I'm, I'm going to burn the house down. Like, yeah, I'm that's, not, that's not cool, cool with that in any shape or form. Right. And they I don't do care how rich women. I am. They subject women yeah. as well, and they want to, like, do some bad stuff to them as well. And, like, we we say that we would be honorable citizens as, you know, it was, you know, brought to us or whatever. But like I said, man, you know, some people might think one way, and then they get into that type of society in Hollywood, and then it changes their whole perspective mm-hmm. because they just got a million-dollar deal. Yeah, I you mean, know, you could be right. a lot. I'm saying probably eighty percent of people. If you, were, not you, but you know, generalize you. If we were all offered this type of situation, 
you know, you don't know what you're going to do. If somebody's mm. like, hey, I got $2 million for you, and all you have to do is just be gay for this scene. No. You know, or you have to do, you have to, nope. you know, you have to whatever. They're going to have to throw a whole lot of zeros on there. That's what I'm saying. There. You know, the people, once those dollars start coming, man, it's hard to say what we would and what we wouldn't do. And that was pretty much the point of the status. You yeah. know, you might go in thinking you're Ellen going to give, you know, free trips away to Cancun and yeah. do this, this, that, and the third, and then turn around. And then you're Harvey Weinstein, bro. You got women coming to your hotel because you're the director and you're setting stuff up. You and your yeah. brother got the production system. And then you're the weirdo who's not married or whatever. And you got all these women coming up to you. You know, a perfect example is look at um, Donnie Darko. The, the There was a chick in there that ended up being in Rounders who ended up being the co-support like support, um, artist, you know, actor that was in that. Who was in a Weinstein film? So allegedly, they think that you know she went up to that hotel room, and then he gave her a little, you know, whatever, and then she all of a sudden she's the supporting um, actor of Rounders with Edward Norton and Matt Damon. Okay, yeah. Some of the big, the chick that was Matt Damon's girl. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember her name off top, but that chick was in Donnie Darko as well. A nobody. You don't even realize she's in it, and then all of a sudden you see. She's the supporting actor in Rounders. She's the girl that, you know, uh, Matt Damon is getting with. Yeah. So that's just that's just one example of some weirdo stuff that was going down that nobody really talked oh, I'm about. I'm sure there's all kinds of crazy oh. things going on in Hollywood, backdoor if, deals, people scratching backs. Oh, and- if we really knew about the entertainers that were entertaining us in movies, we wouldn't watch we wouldn't watch movies. Probably not. We wouldn't watch T V yeah. shows because we got all these people that are you know, Bill Cosby's a you know, a rapist or whatever and you got um you know, like I said, Harvey Weinstein, uh, the list goes on. You know, I don't have to name them, but people know there's a lot of weirdo stuff going on. When yeah. you get a certain amount of money and you can start buying people, that's when it gets weird, man. You know, when you got that type of money, you're like, you know, I'm going to buy this person right here. I want them to do whatever they want. Yeah. Or whatever I want. Sorry. But yeah. uh, to wrap it up on the entertainment history, on this day in 1967, Pink Floyd began their first UK tour at the Royal Albert Hall in London. Excuse me. Playing on a package bill with The Move, The Nice, Amen, uh, Amen Corner, and the headliner, Jimi Hendrix. Ooh, I bet that was great. God, I bet that was such a cool show, no dude. Shit. God, why don't they film that for us and let us know what's going on? <laughs> and, like, another thing is so crazy. I don't know if you knew about this. Um, but Jimi Hendrix was actually allegedly kidnapped and uh, by some gangsters because they say that his manager was like a big gangster. Uh, had nothing to do with like, you know, uh, pop culture or whatever and just came in because he knew Jimmy and he was actually a gangster. They say the conspiracy is that he kidnapped Jimmy so then he could be the hero to his own story. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that was that was re- that was real stuff, man. Damn. Uh, yeah, pretty crazy to think that uh, his own manager was trying to, you know, and it was so weird, like, not only that time, but when Tupac and Biggie came around and, like, you know, uh, record sales were really a big thing at that time. Think about how many weirdos were really trying to kill these people to take their rights. Yeah. Take their percentage well, of... dude, there was, uh, you know, that story about Suge Knight holding vanilla ice over a balcony by his ankles Legs, until he baby, signed right? over his, his uh, feet. right to... That's crazy. Uh, it was something on the Ice Ice Baby album, yeah. but I don't remember which one it was. I'm not he, sure either, but... He, he also allegedly slapped Warren G., which is the person who introduced Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre because right, he Suge was, Knight slapped Warren G. Yes, in the club, in front of everybody. Warren G was actually allegedly the... Oh, I mean, I, I think it was confirmed. He's the one that introduced Snoop Dogg and Dre because he was Dre's stepbrother or half-brother. They can fact-check me on that. You guys can check that. that out. Yeah, for sure. Warren G was who introduced Snoop Dogg and Dre, and Warren G got slapped in the club in front of everybody. Suge Knight straight up slapped him, bro. Hey, Suge Knight cigars, was a you know. true gangster. Gangster, bro. True those people, gangster. Dude, straight up, because Tupac wasn't gangster. And none of those dudes that were around him were really gangster. But that Not dude a was lot. hanging out with some bloods and, you know, really doing some bad things to people, man. Murdering, you know, whatever he had to do. Racketeering, you know, whatever, man. 
That's why he's in real prison. Right yeah, now. yeah. He was a real gangster, but he's sitting in real prison now. Straight up, because he was a gangster. He wasn't just a, you know, album pusher. You know, de- uh, death row manager or CEO or whatever he was. I can't even remember, honestly. Um, also, got some quotes for you all today that I thought was pretty cool. And before I say the first one, I want you guys, if you have children, to go check out the Netflix original called green eggs and ham <laughs> it's actually pretty sweet i watched it with raf and i was like oh my god this is actually pretty good i might have to watch this by myself you know <laughs> like it was really good it's got uh, michael douglas uh adam divine which dude his stand-up was killer yeah um got some great act uh voice actors and i'm sorry and the story is actually pretty cool so if you guys get a second check out green eggs and ham on netflix but um the first quote I have is by Dr. Seuss. Sometimes the questions are complicated and the answers are simple. And that was by Dr. Seuss. And that makes a lot of sense to my life. I feel like simplicity sometimes is better than going very intricate, you know? It really is, man. And not a lot of people know that. You know, a lot of people, they want to overdo and they want to, you know, whatever it may be. But I feel like a lot of people don't take advantage of the simplicity in their life. Yeah. They take a lot of things for granted. Uh, next thing is, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep balance, you must keep moving. That's and, a good one. Oh, great. And that was by Albert Einstein, one yep. of our most brilliant brains we've seen in the past 300 years, literally. Uh, last one I have today is by uh, a beetle, actually. Uh, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And that's by George Harrison. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was Martin Short was on Conan. I shared it on the page, actually. And uh, he was talking about how, like, he met one of the Beatles, which was George Harrison. They were at a movie screening for whatever, he said. Um, and he said he got to smoke a joint with George Harrison. Damn. <laughs> like, they were hanging out, and somebody was like, hey, would anybody be offended if I lit a joint? So the, wh- whoever lit the joint and then passed it to Martin Short and then passed it to George Harrison. <laughs> he was like, oh the 60s and he lit up the <laughs> joint and he smokes it and he passes it to whoever and then it goes in rotation or whatever and uh i thought that was a really cool um little clip i shared it was actually yeah. martin short on uh, conan and uh it was like four days ago or something you guys can go check that out super hilarious i love oh, martin wow. short he's so funny dude i had an opportunity years ago at a motley crew concert mm-hmm. to smoke a joint with nikki six and Nick mars and I was a 17-year-old They weren't kid. sober. In it. Was it before oh, they sh- got sober? I doubt it. I, I, I mean, have they ever really been sober? Well, in the dirt, it showed that they got sober. Uh, uh, sober. I've not seen Sorry. it yet. I've not it seen it. Dirt. No, oh, I haven't seen it yet. God. Yeah. It's seriously so good, man. You will love it. I promise you. Anybody who hasn't watched The Dirt yet, please go check it out. It's super hilarious. My girlfriend and I watched it, and we were laughing and dying the whole time. It was very dramatic as well about... Halfway through, you get into a very dramatic thing that I wasn't even aware about of Motley Crue. Not going to spoil anything for those who haven't watched uh, it. I know what good. you're talking about. Yeah, 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 you already know. You were yeah. probably alive when it happened. I, you yeah, literally. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so like, you know, whatever. But a very dramatic thing happens, yeah. and it's super sad, and it really got yeah, me I'll have to feelings. check that movie out, though, but Dude, I, I've not so seen good. it. But so, yeah, they offered to, you know, got to, awesome. got to get backstage what, and, and uh, meet Motley Crue. Uh, it was up in New York. Okay, nice. Got to got to go backstage. Got to meet Molly Crew. That's sick, dude. Offered me a joint, and I was so scared <laughs> because there was like cops and security yeah. and people everywhere yeah. that I, I passed. Should have. Yeah. yeah, that was a moment you should have. That taken. was definitely a big regret of my life. Oh, you should just handled that. Yeah. Just been like you know what? I don't even care, bro. Another thing I was gonna uh, bring up is the Black Crows are supposed to be touring. Saw that. Off of their first album is going to be like the sets, I guess. Shake Your yeah. Money Maker. Dude. Twice as hard. Jealous oh, Again. Jealous Again. Uh, she Talks to Angels. Hard to Handle. Uh, hard to Handle. Dude, we could keep going on. Yeah. Remedy. I mean, dude, that it's first a lot album. Of old bands getting back together here yeah, recently. Know, right? like, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. Dude. Uh, I'm so what was the other one? The emo band. Uh, my Chemical Romance. Yeah, that's the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Joe, <laughs> Joe Rogan's cousin, I told you, is the lead singer. Really? Uh, the lead singer for My Chemical Romance has, uh, like, I guess, like, his grandma was Joe's aunt or something. No They're shit. actually related. Yeah, huh. bro. They're legit related. I'm not a big fan, but uh, Rage Against the yeah, Machine, I like them. 
Well, Wu Tang Clan said they might be touring with Reg- Reggie Against the Machine. That it's would rumored. Be awesome. Dude, I didn't even tell you. I forgot to tell you before we started. Wu Tang Clan, the second generation of Wu, Young Dirty Bastard, uh, God, what's his name? U Power, Intel. Sons of the Wu Tang Clan right. are starting a group, the second generation of Wu. I'm going to show you the single afterwards. You're going to love it. Yeah. It's so good. And for those of you who haven't watched uh, uh, Wu Tang in American Saga, it's on Hulu. Super great. I love it. I got to recommend it to you as well. Yeah. Uh, they got Dave East playing Method Man. Uh, for those who watched The Get Down, they got the Shaolin guy playing uh, uh, Raekwon. Uh, he goes by Shaw in the show, but it is actually Raekwon. Uh, man, I can't remember. Uh, the, the the lady who played... Oh, my God. I can't remember which cousin it was in the Cosby show. But uh, Pam, I think her name was. She plays the mom of Riza and uh, Divine and, you know, that family or whatever. Super cool, man. You got to check it out. Super good. Uh, ten episodes. They're already out, so you can get that instant gratification of binging it. <laughs> Unlike the rest of these, you know, these little people hey, there. Let are, me tell you, that's one thing I do love about Netflix. When they drop a dude, season, they drop the whole season, not this be, one episode a week to be business. It up. They're changing it up like Hulu. I'm so upset right now. I've been upset with Netflix for months oh, now. Oh, God. Well, they're supposed to be doing the Nickelodeon uh, crossover. I saw that. God, let's hope they do I saw that. Because they're not going to be able to hang with Disney+. Plus. And let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. (laughs) Let's go ahead and address the elephant in the room. This is crazy right now. Netflix is going to have to get their shit together. Oh, bro, they're going to have to. I got three more facts of the day, and then we're going to get into the elephant of the room, my friends, because (laughs) this is crazy right now. I'm seriously, we're all slaves to Disney. Anyways, fact of the day, one ear of corn has about 500 kernels. So if, you know... You got some spacey teeth and you're trying to eat some kernels, bro, (laughs) it's over for you. You're done. You better just go ahead and chop it off the thing and eat that corn up, son. Uh, Second thing is almost is the longest word in English with all the letters in alphabetical order. So I thought that was super weird. I was like, oh, God, that's so crazy. Almost famous, baby. What's up? Uh, last but not least, it is impossible to sneeze with your eyes open. I have personally tried this. And also, if you're taking a number two and you sneeze, it'll all come out. Oh, yeah. If you're, <laughs> if you're like, you know, you're, you're, you're having a bad time, you're constipated, just go ahead and drop a little sneeze and you'll be all the way together. Um, but anyways, been there. Oh, been there, done that. Got the t-shirt to prove it, my friend. Uh, and I'm also going to get the recommendations before we get into our topic uh, first recommendation I have is Yellowstone. For those of you who have not watched Yellowstone, super awesome. It's got your boy Benny from Days and Confused, although he is super thick, a.k.a. putting on the pounds, baby. Uh, he's one of the main characters, Rip. It also has Kevin Costner, yada yada, a bunch of great actors in it. Definitely check it out. Second film I got to recommend is Peaky Blinders. New season just came out. Super awesome. I'm a little bit disappointed in myself that I blew through it as usual because I have no self-control. I'm sorry. Uh, Wu-Tang and American Saga already talked about. Uh, the Last Kingdom, Titans, which my boy recommended me to watch. And hey, I started Titans watching. Cool oh, show. God, it's so good. I love, like we talked about. Hey, bad news, though. I I uh, I don't think it's confirmed, but pretty sure it's going to be canceled after this season. God, don't make me cry on, on, on yeah. air, bro. I'm going to cry, man. <laughs> what are you going to do this to me? Um, no, Titans is super dope. The only thing that you and I agreed on that we don't like is Slade Wilson because he's a little yeah. short dude. Come on, bro. He's slender. He's like six foot three. Get real. Yeah, Deathstroke's supposed to be a big Come dude. on, bro. He's supposed to be pretty big. Like, I'm not convinced that this little... You know, dude my size is Deathstroke. Like, come on, bro. Like, I'm not tall, and I accept it, but this dude's supposed to be tall. Like, you know, Slade Wilson. Come on now, boys. Uh, Titans. And the last thing I'm going to recommend, also another thing that my boy recommended me to watch is C. -E -E, S-E-E, bro. Just like how you see things. Uh, Jason Momoa. uh, What's her name? Uh, uh, Alfre Woodard. Oh, yeah. Who is also in Luke uh, Luke Cage. Dude, she's in a bunch of good stuff. She also play. Uh, she voiced Sarabi in the new Lion King. Great. Did she? Loved it. Yes, bro. She was the uh, voice for Sarabi. Loved it, dude. I thought it was pretty good. A lot of people hated it. See, I get, I get her and uh, I 
can't remember her name off the top of my head. Oh, the lady. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, the lady from uh, Suicide Squad. Oh my God, what is her name? I think it was the same chick. I, Hold I, on. I don't Let think it see. is. I get those two mixed up a lot. Let me see here. IMDb. Oh man, my internet's acting dumb. Yeah, Suicide Squad was whack, dude. I did. I really. I expected not, a whole lot more uh, out of that. I they better. To, they better get bring with the it. Noise. And, yeah, they, they better, better bring, bring their the A noise, game with part bro. two. I'm really not playing. Like I'm tired. I'm a little of upset. Will Smith bailed out of it, but Birds I don't of Prey? blame him. Did you him. see the trailer for that? No. Oh my God, it's good. It's yeah. about the women. Uh, who oh were right, I know what the Birds of Prey okay, is. Okay, fair enough. Well, anyway, so for those who don't, uh, Birds of Prey, check out the trailer. Super awesome. Looks really, really good. Uh, what was that lady's name? Let's see. Sergeant Arms, Viola, I don't know if that's Viola right. Davis, that's Is it. Is that it? Yeah, that's the one. Got you. Oh, they do look very similar. Yeah, they look a lot alike. She was in uh, 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 Infinity War, in, or, uh, yeah, Infinity War, whenever he was in the uh, the football no. stadium or whatever, and she was like, oh, you killed this, this, and that, and the third. Or no, was that, that was Civil, Civil War. War. That Civil was Civil War. War. Okay, okay, that you, was okay, why gotcha. uh, Tony gotcha. Stark decided to go with the With uh, the cords. government. Yeah. Yes, you're absolutely right, bro. That's what built right. up to Civil War. Right. Yeah, you're absolutely right, dude. I know. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. I'm an amateur. Sorry about this. Uh, also, I have some music I want to recommend to you guys today, as usual. Uh, Pigeons playing ping pong. If you haven't heard them, dude, they're dope. I'm telling you. I played you a couple songs. You might not remember, but they were probably super not. cool. I was probably drinking. <laughs> Tyler Childers, Because I would course. absolutely remember a stupid name like that. <laughs> they're actually one of the best jam bands, in my opinion, to hit the scene since Fish. I mean, do they? Never was a big fish key. fan. Yeah, fair enough. I know they're a specific type of flavor that not yeah. everybody likes. You know, like you got to be a certain type of flavor to like them. And it's like Joey Diaz. You got to be a certain type of flavor to like that guy. Joe Rogan. You got to be yeah. a certain type of flavor. When you watch his stand ups, you're like, you know, it's it's very relative to a lot of people and like a lot of things can relate but at the same time you gotta be I, I, willing to relate i think like joey diaz and joe rogue a lot of those guys man to me remind me of like a new age kind of george carlin oh, george yeah. carlin was so funny oh, but on yeah. his stand-ups if you watch him it was really more of him a monologue yeah it was, it was him like monologuing monologue. about real problems 100%. in real society yeah adding some you know funny quips and, and oh, things yeah. in there in the middle of it yeah that's very true my friend and I've always compared, like, I always say, like, when people talk about George Carlin, I'm like, dude, he wasn't even really a comedian. He, he was, really like, was. He was funny, a voice but, of our time. Right. Like, he, uh, not even I love George time, Carlin. But, like, a voice of the generation that he was in, because he was yeah. older when, he died when oh, I yeah. was young, you know what I'm saying? Like, not even a couple, few years ago. I'm still young or whatever, but, like, you know, it. he was very monologue. He was like, you know what, I'm going to talk about some real stuff. Throw a couple jokes. Yeah. Because at one point... Well, that's how he got people to pay attention to what 100%. he was saying. It was real. Yeah. Relative, you know? And the thing about him was he did a special a year for HBO or Stars. I don't know. Probably what HBO. Was. You know what I'm talking about. But he did one every year. And, and every single year he would talk about what was happening to people, you know, whatever it may be, bro. And he was really sticking to the script. Like, yeah. look, this is what's happening with the presidency. Uh, U.S., uh, you know, world, you know, like world uh, news, whatever it may be, excuse me, he was sticking to it, man. Yeah. He really was telling us the truth. And he was honestly a gem that we didn't, we took for granted oh, until yeah. he died. He didn't, he wasn't appreciated until for he what died, he was. Man. Until he died. And it's so sad, man. And I mean, you know me, bro, I didn't get into comedy, comedy like heavy until like maybe a year ago, a year and a half. Yeah. I started telling you about, co you know, comedians, like start telling everybody about comedians that I love. Uh, Burt Kreischer is gonna be in Charleston. We gotta go see oh, that. Oh, I want to go so bad. Yeah, bro, we have to. We gotta get those. We gotta get those pre-sale tickets, man. Everybody who's living in the tri-state, you gotta go get those Birdie Boy tour. Uh, you know, tickets that are for Burt Kreischer, aka the Machine. The Machine. Love gotta love him, dude. Uh, so yeah, back to the elephant in the room. Disney Plus. God. What is going on right hey, now, Hey, Disney's going to own the world before oh, we know it. dude, this is crazy. Walt Disney's been dead for what? He died in like the 50s or something? Or the 40s? Man, I'm going to look it up. I can't I'm not remember 100%. Honestly. I want to say the 60s. Okay. He was uh, froze, hey, actually. Fun fact. Do you know the last words that Walt Disney said before he passed away? I do not. Was 66, good call. Kurt oh, no, Russell. Hold on, hold on. Date of, yeah, 66, good call, bro. Nice. That well, I'm awesome. just thinking... Uh, 
Disney had just signed Kurt Russell to do a couple movies. Like really? The old school Disney movies. Oh. I think it was uh, like the world's strongest man or something okay. like that was, uh, was Kurt Russell's first 60s, movies. I mean. Yeah. Um, that was the last words Walt Disney said before he passed away. They wanted to sign Kurt no. Russell. Just the word, Kurt Russell. What? Like Just those two words was the last God, words he spoke. I would be spoke. so honored if I was Kurt Russell. So honored that Walt Everybody Disney. thought that was just weird as can be. Dude, but that's so like, crazy. What was he getting ready to say? Or you know, maybe it was just on his mind where they had just signed him. Died from lung cancer. Yeah. Literally the last words he well, spoke before him. he passed away so was Kurt dead. Russell. Maybe he's like Fry <laughs> for Futurama. And they're He'll, gonna like They'll wake know, him up in like three thousand years. That's what they said that like I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but he said that wake me up whenever you find a cure for my um disease. So I don't know if it was just lung cancer. It could have just um, been lung cancer. I but, mean you know they really have money. that kind of technology in the sixties no, to be able to no freeze way. somebody for that kind of time. Uh, that's just rumored, so I guess it could be like false and maybe he did just like legit die. But like that's always that seems like more this, plausible. Yeah, very, very <clears throat> true, very true. But like it's always been you know, it's always been very implied, like through Family Guy and like uh, little like articles on right. the internet and you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, that's what I've always heard that he was froze and then uh, you know, it was gonna be yeah, you know, it was gonna be It just froze his head and it'll yeah. be more like Nixon instead of Fry. <laughs> Richard Nixon whenever he's in the thing. Um, but yeah, the Disney Plus thing is going crazy right now, bro. I really it's like it's hit this wave that is just unstoppable. You can't yeah. stop it. And dude. I tell like, you, a month ago, I told myself I was not going to do it. Me too. It came out yesterday. I got it. I'll be damned if I didn't get right me on there too. and sign hey. up for my free trial. Likewise, bro. I literally spent a dollar because that's what they it costs a dollar. <laughs> like they take a dollar for reinsurance and you got it till like seven days after you get yeah. it or something. And literally, like I told you today, you know, Tegan was like, hey, they paused this movie. You know, and it was Guardians of the Galaxy, which is a phenomenal movie. One oh, of yeah. my favorites, man. And, uh, you know, let's go ahead and talk about The Mandalorian because that really blew my mind. Uh, that was actually the reason I decided to go ahead and get Disney yeah. Plus uh, so I could check out the first episode oh, of that. Dude, and it, it was, was well good. worth it. Chapter one, man. It was super good. It was real good. And, and we're all on the on the fence right now <laughs> of if it's Boba Fett or if it's not Boba Fett. If you see Boba Fett in the thing, I don't know what's going on. I don't think he's Boba Fett. Yeah, but I don't think I'm he is. I'm almost either. positive I'm that that him. guy in the background, when he walks into that one the uh, little hangout. cave, yes, yeah, bro, uh, that that was Boba Fett standing on the, the side. The shoulder plate, right. dude. I think Boba Fett didn't die in the pit. I don't think so either. You know, it's never been uh, made official canon that 100%. he survived, but it's always been kind of hinted around. Yeah. That I mean, that's a pretty weak way for somebody as badass as Boba Fett to go out. Very true. It's always set. A little uneasy with me. Very true. But overall, I mean, if we're being honest, The Mandalorian is pretty dope, and we definitely got to recommend it to everybody. To oh, check yeah. It out. Yeah, it's, I can't wait to see the rest of it. Oh, man. I, I want to kind of just wait and just, like, let it all come out, and then instant gratification. I, you know, I told myself that. Uh, uh, that's I want not going to happen. No, I'm going to watch the second yeah, episode. It's just how it goes. I wasn't Friday. even... I wasn't even gonna watch it. I was but just this gonna. Friday. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't even gonna watch it. I was just gonna let it. Like, nah, whatever. I'll wait till the end. And I watched that first episode. I was like, oh my god, this yeah, is so I had planned good. On waiting until it all came out, and then signing up for my seven day yep. free trial. Watch it all at once. Yep. But, uh, yeah, you know, did not go plans. down. This is for sure. Disney owns us all, my friend. Yeah. It owns us all. And The Mandalorian definitely is a recommendation for me today for you all to check out. Definitely, uh, you know, it's only one episode out right now, but it's super good. We don't really know what's going on. You know, we think that it's... A lot of unanswered questions right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, we think that it's, you know, not Boba Fett, but you see a little cameo of Boba Fett, like a little little screenshot almost of Boba Fett, but it's not guaranteed. We don't know. He could be dead. He could be dead, bro. Uh, next thing we're going to get on to is our favorite MCU movies. And I'm going to go ahead and let you go first on your favorite oh. MCU movies. What's your top oh, three? Man, it's so hard to pick, really. It's tough. Like, I, now they're all available. Yeah. Like, yeah, Disney Plus. Hey, I mean, Endgame is a masterpiece. Oh, 100%. Endgame and Infinity War so are good. both amazing movies so and to have I mean that's like my childhood coming to life on the big screen to see all those characters in all one the movie that big battle at the end of yep. Endgame Straight gives me chills oh, Captain America picking up the hammer 
doesn't get any better God, than that. God, that was so yeah, legit. It doesn't get any better than that. And and honestly, I've always been a sucker for Captain America. That's always yeah. been one of my favorite characters. Sure. And the Winter Soldier is probably... It's top three for uh, me. It's definitely in the top three. Top Where three. I would put it in those three, I'm not sure. It's tough to arrange them. But I love The Winter Soldier tough. because it's not so much uh, just a superhero movie as it is. It's like a spy movie. Like James Bond. You know, yeah, you know, there's, there's a lot mind. going yeah, on in that yeah. movie, and I for love sure. it. For sure. Because it's not a typical superhero movie. Straight up, dude. Definitely one of my favorites. Winter Soldier is great, man. Civil War was awesome. Oh, God, it was so good. Captain America was, 2 and 3 were seriously some of the so best movies. So many good Marvel saw. movies that have been put out. Ragnarok was great. Yeah, Ragnarok was good, Black man. Black Panther was a really good one. Oh, yeah, visually, it was so I, good. I can't wait to see Black Panther 2. Yeah, Doctor Strange 2 is going to be awesome, yeah. too, bro. I'm pumped about that. Um, I don't know, I'd probably say my three favorite are probably Guardians of the Galaxy, Civil War, and Endgame, to be honest. you got to throw it on there, bro. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's got to hit on there somewhere, bro, it's just because, movie. man. It just it wrapped it all up, you know, and let yeah. the, let there be another another legacy, you know. Right. So good, seriously, bro. Uh, and an honorable mention is definitely Infinity War. I got to throw it on there as well. Oh yeah. Just because, like you said, you know, well, you and see... they lost at the end. You know, that yeah. doesn't happen in, no. in superhero movies. Not really. Uh, and I really, you know, uh, they just kind of set it up for the yeah. next movie, and it for was sure. done that way. But man, that was. Perfect. Yeah. Love it, perfect. dude. Love it. Ant Man's one of my favorites as well. I love Paul Rudd. Yeah, Paul I think Rudd's he's great. I think he's perfect as Ant Man. I think he really kills it. Uh super great, man. Like and you know, the thing is obviously Marvel definitely ripped off the Atom, you know, and yeah. made Ant Man just because like they didn't really There was care. A, there was a lot of characters that, that oh, yeah. Marvel kind of ripped off from D C. Straight up Deadpool was another one. Wade yeah. Wilson, Slade Wilson, hundred percent like we talked about earlier, Deathstroke. Um, yeah, but like I said, you know, The Guardians of the Galaxy, man, is seriously one of my favorites just because it's a good movie, you know, it's good for everybody, it feels good, it's funny, you know, you got the best soundtrack of all time on yeah, the first one. The second one oh, was disappointing on the yeah, soundtrack. Yeah, it wasn't. For me. It, it was. The first it, one was so good that I expected the second one to be even better. It set up a lot of, you know, it set up a lot of expectations yeah. that we just kind of got let That's down. That's actually the, my least favorite part of the second yeah, one was the good soundtrack. Call. Good Everything call. else about the second one was on point. That's true, bro. I, I can't disagree that, with that. I got, my favorite part of the whole movie, though, is at the beginning uh, with the little group dancing around. Yeah, that dance was hilarious. Spider. That's the best part of the movie right That there. was funny, bro. That was real funny. And, like, he wouldn't dance around uh, Dragon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was really funny, man. I love that. Um, but yeah, those will probably wrap up my uh, favorite MCU movies. Uh, if you guys have any that is your favorite, drop your top three, man. Drop them in the comments. We definitely want to hear. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is voting because all of us got out and vote uh, voted this last week. I hope everybody did. Anybody who's 18 and older who's not a felon, uh, I hope you guys definitely got out and voted because it makes a difference 100%. You got to get registered for voting uh, for 2020, which is coming up November. We got the primaries for the presidential election. Let's hope that everybody got squared away with that. Um, I'm not for sure how you go about registering. I'm, I'm sure you can just go to your county clerk. I feel like that's what you do. You go to your county clerk. You register either uh, Democrat, Republican, or I other. I honestly don't remember where. I think that's where it is, where yeah, you get your ID wrong. at. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. If you guys haven't registered to it's vote... It's been so long since I did that. For yeah. sure, for sure. <laughs> but if you guys um, haven't registered to vote, definitely go check it out. Uh, definitely. I mean, you could probably just call your courthouse of whatever county you're in and then go from there. You know, honestly, and then they'll tell you, they'll point you in the right direction of where you need to register. It might be with your ID. Yeah, it's, um, it's either county clerk's office or your local, your city building. Mm -hmm. It's one of the two. Definitely go register to vote because we need everybody to go vote for these primary elections. Uh, the more votes we get, you know, that's you know, that's how we change. That's how we change our democracy. That's how we change our political system. Um, if you don't go vote. You know, you're doing yourself a disservice because you actually do have a voice in this community that you live in, this country that you live in, and you definitely got to get out and go vote because it's very, very important. Absolutely. I was very anti-voting, you know, votes don't matter or whatever, but if we all go do it, we can't be denied 
You know, our government can't deny us if we all go do it. Everybody who's eligible to vote, dude, there's no way. I hope way so, that, at least. Yeah, you know? true, true, true. But they can't stop us, man. If we can vote these people that we don't want out of office, then we can really make a big difference, man. You know, we saw it with Andy Bashir going in after Matt Bevan. Yeah. We voted uh, Matt, Bevan, Matt Bevan out of, uh, you know, political, uh, you know, Relevance, so you know that's great. We don't have him in there anymore. We get Andy Bashir. Let's hope that he does, you know, some things that we need to do in this state for Kentucky. We'll see how it goes. You know, it could be the same old, you know, business as usual, but we'll see how it goes. So I don't want to speak before we see how things turn out for us, you know. Uh, next thing I got is uh, traumatic numbness. So, pretty much. The traumatic numbness that we're speaking of is essentially, like, it's so crazy to think that people are just numb to the trauma that our country has dealt with. You know, Pearl Harbor, we got 9-11, we got all these things, you know, Sandy Hook, we got school shootings, we got whatever it may be. Even when you hear new miracles, you don't even believe them. You're like, eh, whatever, that's just the news trying to, you know, trick us or whatever. But honestly, man, there's some bad stuff that happened that we need to have empathy for. Yeah. You know, we need to, we need something that is really going to unite our peoples as a whole so we can really be involved with our country, man. Because if we just keep going on like, oh, yeah, it's another day, I'm going to go to work, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, whatever, that's never going to fix anything. Well, we've become so desensitized to, to violence and, yeah. and traumatic incidents taking place in this country over the last several years that it's, 100%. you know, it's like you said, we're just numb to it anymore. You know, it's nothing to turn on the TV in the morning and see on the news that there was another mass shooting yeah. or another, uh, you know, uh, terrorist attack or, or, yeah. or something, you know, and it didn't something used to horrific. be that way. Like, no. I mean, I remember growing up when I was a kid and that, things like that were un, unthought of. Yeah. You know, and then 9-11 happened. Yep. And I remember on September 12th, 2001, mm -hmm. this country was one country for the first time in a long time. United. You know, absolutely united. united. And, and it sucks that it takes such a huge event, uh, catastrophic event like yeah. that, to, to bring the country together. Um, and now, you, you know, the thing with 9-11 is it there's a lot of people... Conspiracies could be in an inside job. There's a lot of things that been. I don't believe about what they gave us or what you know. Yeah, 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 for sure. For told sure. us about yeah, 9/11. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, could have been. But either way, whether it was a planned attack, an inside job, no matter what it was, the outcome was still September 12th. Man, everybody was going out and buying flags, and yep. everybody was unified. You know, yeah, unified. everybody was together, man. Everybody and felt. I don't. I honestly feel this is going to sound kind of crazy, yep. but. It would. Our country has gotten so divided over the last what eight, ten years, maybe. Oh yeah, hundred uh, percent. Like ridiculously divided. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy now. Uh, people, you're either one way or the other. Man, people will fight you in the street oh, over yeah. the clothes that you're wearing. Oh, you know, dude, because the you're wearing a, a Hillary shirt or a Trump yeah. hat. People will jump your ass over yep. stuff like that. The nowadays. political climate is That's rough. That's crazy to me. Rough. Uh, you know, like just for an example. It would never happen, but say I voted for Hillary, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and you voted for Trump, or sure. vice versa. I sure. voted for Trump, and you voted for Hillary. Yeah. Uh, just because I disagree with your political views doesn't mean that I hate you. No, and absolutely. That's how it should be. You know, that's who cares? I've be. got friends that vote for people that I don't like, and I vote yeah. for people they don't like. But we're still friends. Who gives a shit? That's how it should be. Uh, but man, so many people nowadays take that kind of stuff. So it's ended marriages and friendships and cut ties with family members. We have never seen this type of political oh, climate. No, no, We've never seen this. And Obama is like, oh yeah, it's, Obama was rough. Nah, dude, we've never seen this type of political climate with people fighting and killing and just going to extremes over what they believe in. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. It really blows my mind that Granted, we've even got people that are making up stories about oh. getting jumped in the middle of the night by yeah, guys <laughs> wearing Trump old, hats. Old Jesse, son. Yeah. I mean, Look at Jesus that. Christ. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, people need to get their stuff together. It's just, it, it, it blows my mind. It's nuts out there. I oh. would, I, it, what I was going to say a second ago, I got mm -hmm. a little sidetracked. I know it sounds crazy, uh, but it would take another catastrophic event yeah. 
to get this country unified again. And even then, yeah. it wouldn't last. No, it would like last, last a last couple, time. few days, and then everybody would be like, oh, whatever, I'm just yeah. going to go back to drinking my Bud Light and watching cable. You know, and, I, and you can't blame video games. Mm-mm. You can't blame TV. It's everything. Music. It's mm-hmm. it's all around us. Everything. It's commercials. It's and, conclusive. You know, anything that's on cable TV nowadays, you know, it's, Super it's uncensored. Everything. Yeah, it's yeah. everything around us has desensitized oh, everybody. Yep, and it's just, I don't even know, man. Like, it's so hard to just even, like, try to fit in. Like, try to find where you're supposed to be with the whole political thing. Like, you want to think one way, and you're like, oh, yeah, I can think this way. No, you can't, because these people well, are going to hate you. You can think you. you want to, but sure, you got to sure, be sure. very careful nowadays yeah. what you say. Yep, because people will hate you and demonize yeah. you and alienate just you. Just because of somebody that you voted for. Straight up, yeah. Like it's, it's hard for people to even tell who they voted for or what party they believe in. Right. Even if they vote against that party, those people automatically associate. You're, yeah, you're automatically put into a group. Conservative, straight yeah. up, liberal. Whatever it may be, it's so horrible that we're categorized. Because we, I mean, we need to be categorized to a to a degree. Yeah. We need to be like, okay, well, I'm this, this, and that, whatever. But like, I might step outside of this and disagree with this. I mean, you know, like I said, nowadays you're either one or the other. You're either yeah. a snowflake or a racist. Yep, straight up. There's no Pretty in much. between. Nobody can find a neutral ground. And if we could, man, I feel like we'd be in a much better place to you know speak about how we feel and like so people are so afraid to vote against their party because then they'll be called a traitor yeah you know like yeah. you know it's i don't know it's so crazy because right of now. the political divide now oh yeah that's what most people are doing is they're voting straight party straight party if i'm a democrat i'm gonna vote nothing but democrat right. i don't even care if the conservative is the better vote for my community right straight up and that's what's so crazy that people they just think that they can just keep going with their party keep going with their party our parties are not legit they are not right oh, there's I, a lot of things I blame the parties for the the biggest the div- part of the divide that we are exactly hundred percent right the division of our people is coming from the parties because they want to split us and then it comes to the race and white and black and Chinese and Mexican and all this this and that and the third but like we all need to stand together, and we need to vote with what we think is right for humans. Yeah. Not just for party, like conservative right. or Democrat or whatever. We need to think about, look, this is for my fellow human, so I'm going to make the right decision on what I need to do. Yeah. You know? In a perfect world. In a perfect world. That'd be nice. If we can spread that knowledge to people, hopefully some people take it up, but you know as well as I do... People just want to vote with what their parents taught them. Or, like, you know, they don't even make their own decisions. They're like, oh, yeah, my parents were liberals. That's a big part of it, definitely. Oh, yeah, it's instilled in you as a child. Like, oh, yeah, we love, you know, uh, we love Bill Clinton. We love George Bush. We love whoever is our party. We never vote with our human right. Yeah. You know, it's just, I don't know, man. It, it, It gets real tricky whenever we get down that slippery slope. And people don't want to listen because they think that they've been taught what to do is right. Because, you know, it's hard to disobey your parents. It's hard to disobey what you've been taught your whole life. Yeah. You know, it's hard to go against the grain. But once you get older, it's up to us as adults to make our own Do your own, own research. research. Exactly. Do, your, do double research, man. Do triple research. Learn about your party. Learn about your candidate. Learn about your community. You know, like yeah. we all have to do this. As human beings, once we hit eighteen, or we're all going to be doomed, and it's going to be Big Brother. It's going to it's going to be, you know, straight yeah, up. We're George. probably headed that direction anyway. Exactly. If we don't take a stand now against the things that are being pushed, you know, pressed upon us, we're never going to, you know, flourish as regular folk. You know, it'll always be the rich versus the poor. Yeah. It'll always be class war. That's what will happen. And then, you know, they'll bring in China or Russia, and then we'll. We'll just be done, dude. There's no way we'll have to bow down at that point. And in my opinion, like I said, you know, the people who are working class need to vote and need to stand up for what they believe in and stand up against things like tyranny and things we are experiencing right now. Because I'm not the biggest Trump supporter. He's not, like, my best friend, you know. He's done a couple few good things or whatever. But for the most part, he's just playing the game like the rest of them to get money. You know, it's just a money game at that point. And once we make politics, if we could take the money out of politics, we'd be in good shape. We really would. 
but it's so hard to take that money out because you have, you know, well, it's been generations upon generations 100%. upon generations mm-hmm. of politicians have just been politicians to get rich and, and make and, money. And being a lobbyist is 100% legal. You are allowed to pay into po- political parties. Yeah, and that's garbage. Oh, dude, come on. We need people out of here. Come on, the lobbyists, bro, these people got so much money what is going on dude and they're just paying into this oh yeah i want i want you to push this bill through i want you to press this uh zoning difference or whatever it may be and these dudes are just okay well you got a lot of money money. as as long as you You got got the money money. you can do whatever you want to corporations run politicians and politicians write legislature or you know they vote things bills that go through on what those companies want them to vote yep and when I'm paying into that, I expect a certain type of, uh, you know, uh, I, I expect a, a certain type of return from these people when I'm paying millions and millions right. and millions of dollars. Like Small that. town politics is the only thing that sure. really yeah. can make a difference. That's very true. You start with your community, you build to your state, you build to your country. You know, if we can all get the generations, if we can get people who are like-minded onto these things and they're really voting and they're going out here and making a difference in our communities... And we can really make something happen, you know? Like, we can really do something that is good for our country. It might be too late, but it might not be too late. That's another thing, you know? Like, we're right in the teetering spot where, like, oh, my God, like, we really could make a difference. But it's going to be tough, and it's going to take a lot of people who that's, really care. That's the care. problem is you've got to get the numbers. You've yeah, got to have numbers. the numbers. Otherwise, Straight up. you're just pissing in the wind. There you point. go. You got these people who are 40 to 65 years old who have been voting since they were granted the right. They're not going to stop voting. They're voting every single time. That's why they vote these people into office because we have no say. The people that are from 18 to 38, that people are from 18 to 35, 18 to 30, those people are the people like, oh, yeah, votes don't matter, whatever, bro. I'm not going to make a difference. Like, yeah, you will if we all went and did it, yeah. you know, but we all don't go and do it. So that's just what it is, man. Like, people are really stuck in this type of misinformation, this propaganda. There's a good portion of people that don't go out and vote, and then there's a bigger portion of people that do go out and vote, but they don't... uh, um, They don't research who they're voting for and what the person they're voting for stands for and what their policies are. And that's what people got to do is they got to do their damn homework instead of just, like we said a minute ago, voting straight party Party. or voting who their parents told them to vote for. Not a good idea. And people need to, you know, the libertarian thing, yes, that's a great idea. And I would love for a libertarian to be in office, but it's never going to happen. So just go ahead and stop voting for them because... Yeah, they'll, they'll... I don't want to say never. I'm gonna say but more than likely. Your independent parties, Green Party, the it's hard, those, all man. those kind of things, they're never gonna be able to compete it's gonna with be the so Republicans tough and the Democrats. Because you have so much endorsement, you have so much right. generation just breeding into these people that vote Democrat or yeah. Republican. Those and two I parties wanna is vote, where all the money is. I wanna vote for Libertarian. I really do, man, but it's just not realistic, it's not plausible. It's just I don't know, it's so sad you're throwing your vote away. When you could be voting for the lesser of two evils. Yeah. Because that's pretty much where we're at. We're just voting for the lesser of two evils right. straight up. It's not like they give us very good options most of the no, time. No, 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 no. But yeah, man, this has been an awesome episode. Episode 44, baby. Got a lot of knowledge in this one. Uh, hashtag together FTR. And if you guys don't know already. Yeah, let me smoke a cigarette. <laughs> www.togetherftr.com. Make sure to go check it out. Make sure to go subscribe to YouTube because we're trying to get them subscribers up. I really appreciate you guys. It's been a blessed night. Thank you all so much. Have a great night. Have a good night.